Greetings, I am Metatron. Metatron, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Um, um, angels are very much on my, uh, on my mind lately. Um, I wonder if I'm an angel in, a, in, a, in, in, in some ways. You are not from the angelic realm, but the angels are watching over you at this time because uh -huh. you are an important figure on this planet in some way. And uh -huh. to protect those that are important, the angels are involved. I see. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting connected to that energy and it's, uh, it's wonderful. And we I are happy that you are connected to it. That is what we proposed that the energy that we send, you connect to, and it helps to protect you in a greater way. Thank you. Yeah, I, I get signs from you all the time. Yes. From you, uh, from, the, from, from the angels, I mean. Um, yes. Uh, do you have any comments on what we just discussed about the war, the ocean, the economy, and... Um, Anything of that sort. There are many things happening on your planet. Politically, uh -huh. spiritually, environmentally. Um, there is so much to speak about. Can you be more specific? Would you like to know about what I feel about the economy right now? All right. Yes, your, in, your economy is fragile. There is no uh -huh. question that the world economy is also fragile but uh -huh. it is not yet ready to uh, implode, but uh -huh. it is ready for some changes. And that is what the cabal is planning to do. They're planning to hype, uh, hype up rumors of war so that uh, war may possibly break out. They're going to spread rumors of uh, distrust between the nations so that war could possibly break out. And this will encourage them to make even more money so that they can build up their plans for after the financial collapse so that they may continue to be in charge. They uh -huh. know that it takes a long time for finances to build up in this way so that it collapses entirely worldwide so they would like to start again in the same way because they will not be here for that much longer, but their children and the, their heirs will have to deal with that particular matter. But they know how to deal with money matters better than anyone else. And so when they decide to reinvent the economy, it will be very similar to the present day one. That is unfortunate. Hopefully there will be others that will try to get involved with this and move it in different directions so that it may not be a mono, um, mono money society again. Whereas money is the all-powerful thing, and, there, and it is the only way to survive. There must be other ways to do things on your planet so that money is not the only thing that brings prestige and honor. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nice. Um, how can you see that? I mean, I, I usually, because I, I live through Russian transformation, Russian perestroika. We just discovered that there is nothing new. It's only the proportion change. So the, the, the seeds of the future are already here. That's the main lesson I learned. So can you point to those seeds? Like, um, I assume that we already have some seeds of that new reward system, a new fairness system where the resources are distributed without the use of the money. Fairness can be distributed. The thing is this, you have to recognize where there is things that can be used instead of money, such as mm -hmm. skills, intellect, talent, uh, 
artistic abilities, mm -hmm. aesthetics, many, many things. Work ethic can be also used in different ways to promote yourself in a world where money is not the main function. So mm -hmm. you may be able to get all the necessities of life and, and not have to deal with a lot of money. The money would be used for things outside of the norm, such mm -hmm. as pleasure and such as travel or things that are not necessary to your uh, basic lifestyle. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, we, we, we do that now with, uh, with um, uh, people in healing community. We exchange labor for labor. It's like a labor for labor barter. Yes, it is the beginning of a new thought process. And sometimes it is uh, the labor in uh, computers or websites or but uh, still money, video. But still money is your number one exchange. And these barters are sometimes negligible in, in the ways of survival. Right, absolutely. But, and so we need to bring in the thought process that this can help you with your survival if you are a healer, if you are a computer program. You get something worthwhile as an exchange, such as... To, um, bedding or or some kind of tools or some kind of equal trade that would benefit your life in a different way than the the thing that you are offering. Um, I think in in Israel in uh, kibbutz uh, farms they or factories they also have uh, external money, but internally they just uh, exchange uh, resources without the use of money, sometimes. Yes, occasionally. Money has become all powerful on your planet. In every society, it is a means of survival. Uh -huh. So yes, there are some things, but it will be rare that it can be that useful. It will be only one occasion, perhaps two a year. This is not sufficient enough for survival. Now we have Uber, Uber um, uh, leading the way in a new economy. Basically people don't have an employer anymore. They can plug into electronic system and work at any time. This just is one, much better. Yeah, so, so people are exploited, but they don't have a personal relationship to, the, to any bosses, which is a great opportunity, a great advantage. So people who love freedom, they just grow, jump on it because, you know, not having a boss is such a blessing. They can be free and they plan their time. So there is no, no time pressure anymore. So I wonder if that scheme somehow can be can evolve into the ex fair exchange with, of labor without the use of money. It is possible, but money is still the exchange for Uber drivers. Of course. <laughs> the uh, thing is about this kind, this kind of uh, business is that you are responsible for your own success. This right. should happen in more places and it should be more in bring each person more influence about what their part of the work is and how to do it better. Right, right now I'm doing some projects and I, I invite freelancers and there is a site guru.com which is pretty much like Uber system just for more sophisticated work. And people also have free schedule and they jump on the project and compete for the project and then, and then they hire them for, to, to do a little project for a good um, price. And yeah. um, I think that, that maybe will, will be the future of Earth economies uh, that 
you know, there will be no companies or very few companies and many more distributed systems where people just um, choose what work to do in the computer uh, and, and use a computer system or internet to plug in and get, get the work they want uh, at free time without any scheduling. I think that's, that's the future. So there will be Uber for every service possible. This is in its very, very early stages. To say that it is the future is premature. However, it could be a, a way to look at the future that other companies have not even begun to look into yet. In old Russia, uh, there were uh, peasants and there were traveling workers and um, because neither one had money, they just um, exchanged work for, for food. And, and, and shelter. So yes. they would travel and wherever there was work, they would ask if there is a work and they would come and do the work and had uh, food and shelter. This is more of what I am speaking of. Right. This, this kind of trade is beneficial for both sides and it does not include money. But in order for survival in most places it is money that is necessary it sounds like you have hit on a place where trade and barter actually works it used to work in the past on in your world but it does not seem that it is very prominent any longer um at, in russia there was a time a very short time maybe a couple of years maybe three years I think it was around 1991 when, um, in, my, in my life, when um, the old system fell apart and the police didn't get any salary, so they didn't do any work. Uh, and, and that allowed people to start trading everywhere. So every corner had a trader there. They would come with a little chair or a little table and put their goods out there. And immediately, like after uh, having no food and no goods, we had lots of food and lots of goods. And sometimes people didn't have money, so they would exchange things. And, uh, and uh, I just realized that the absence of traders on the streets is only, the re is, is only for the call because uh, they, uh, the police removes them. So there is a lot of monopoly on the trade, especially in the, you know, Food and goods, there is a monopoly. Like uh, if you're a farmer, you cannot join them. You cannot sell your, sell your food because there is a monopoly of other farmers which are combined in a guild, in, a, in, a, in a, some sort of uh, monopoly, and they protect their right of um, having that uh, right to trade. So my point is that it's a very artificial system. You know, as soon as the control over, uh, over the monopoly falls apart, people will start uh, trading uh, freely and uh, there will be a lot of exchange. It's only the control system which prevents it. That is why the cabal wants a plan in place that as soon as the system collapses, they will be able to be begin functioning again within a few days. <clears throat> they want people to fall back on their old ways because they do not like change. And so in, if this happens, that they are able to reestablish quickly, they will be able to reestablish the old ways as well. Yeah, in Russia, the old ways were established gradually. And it took maybe about 30 years, not 30, maybe 20, 20 years to actually return to the control system. And initially they um, required all the traders to have a registration for, and then to have a, a limited space like a kiosk or little building or a tent. And then they removed all the tents. Like I think they removed the tents about 10 years ago. And it came to back all the system of total control. Yes, those ways have got to stay and not change. The thing is, 
they were also pushing for it to become status quo so they could have more control once again. So as they moved, they saw what they had to do to gain uh, power and control, and ultimately they got what they wanted. All right. Uh, what do you think about dragons? Do, do you, um, are dragons somehow related to angels? Dragons and angels are not related, but we find that there are some dragon species that are very wonderful and uh -huh. other dragon species that are very negative. Uh -huh. So um, the, the fact that they're awakening to confirm it and uh, is, it, is it building in the war? I, I did not hear what you said. Are the dragons awakening because the war is coming? They are awakening for many reasons. Mm -hmm. For the ascension, for bring, to bring war, to bring dis, disclosure, for balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, I said that there were many wonderful dragon species and many negative ones. But there are also many positive humanoid species and many negative ones as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you cannot look at them and t say bad or good. You may look at them and say that they are a species and that the way they evolved turned out to be, to make them bad or good or positive and, or negative. Thank you. Um, I think that's all I had, uh, all questions I had for you. Um, I, I, I would invite maybe dragons to speak next. And if you have anything else to say, I would welcome that too. Only that I am here to help you. I'm here to help the world with whatever they need help with. They need to ask us. They need to let us know what is on their minds. Many times the angels are ignored by the populace because A, they don't believe in them or believe, B, they do not believe they have much power over anything or C, they just see them as uh, pretty statuettes and not real beings. But I must say that the energy of angels can help your world. We can bring good information and powerful change, but we must be asked and God must allow us to do so. I just, I, I just remembered one more question which I had. Um, so I was um, meditating and uh, had a great travel to some areas which were actually very funny to my eye. Uh, so they were all very cartoonish and um, I would say lower levels maybe, lower levels, very cartoonish, very distorted. And uh, they were very funny in a way and very distorted in a way. And I was thinking that if, a, if an angel would come there, uh, if, he, if the angel looked like an angel, we see it, it that angel would be not able to relate to that word, world. So for the, an angel to come to that world, the angel also would have to be distorted and look very funny. Correct. That is what happens. When we come into any area, any societal area, we immediately change to that uh, kind of lifestyle, that look, and only because we need to bring our message in a way that will be accepted. That's right. So when you come to Earth, you also have to distort, to distort yourself. In some ways. And that your distortion would also look funny to some. Of course. 
Mostly when angels appear, they are there in a male or a female capacity, whereas in the angel realm, we are sexless. Uh -huh. now, to come into your society, we must appear as a male or a female in some way, or speak as a male or a female. The mm -hmm. thing is about that is we do look uh, ambiguous. Androgynous, uh, yeah, huh? Androgynous, there's the word. But we look ambiguous as well. But mm -hmm. we cannot fully take on male or female uh, roles unless we come to your planet to live. All right. I'm listening to a couple of uh, Russian singers who I believe are very much angelic. There is uh, so much angelic in them, it's just, you know, hard not to notice. Yes. And I just wonder, are all the singers angelic? No. All singers use tonality as a way to change the hearts and minds of the people around them, but sometimes are not aware of what they are doing with their gifts. But they are not all angelic, but some have angelic connections, and some have negative connections, and some have alien connections. So you may have different kinds of uh, effects on the peoples because of where the energies are connected to. Right. But what would you, uh, percentage-wise, among famous uh, singers, how many of them are incarnated angels, percent-wise? Incarnated angels? Uh -huh. A very few percent. But there are a few. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. Was Sinatra an angel? No. I see. Because some of those angels are pretty tough. I don't know. They have that tough history and, um, how do you say, the history of being involved in crime and then they still are angels by some reason. I will give you an example of someone that has some angelic uh, influences. Andrea uh -huh. Bocelli is angelic in many ways. Say again the name? Andrea Blo Bocelli. Bocelli. I'll have to look it up. And was there a crim criminal influence as well? On who? On Andrea Bocelli. No criminal offenses, no. Because it looks like for an angel to actually fit into the system, they have to be pretty rough. They, they take on the roughness. They have to survive. Right. They are not used to the harshness of this reality. Mm -hmm. so, but it is not like, unlike any of the other species coming here. There are many species, such as Arcturians, Fendorians, and Syrians, that when they come here have a very hard time adapting to this harsh reality as well. Uh -huh. But angels have a particularly hard time because of the realm on which we come from. Uh, one of the uh, types of humans here are very mental. They have big head and they're very mm, meticulous and they have a hard time socializing, but they plan really well. They uh, focus on... Um, minute detail and they can think of uh, very complicated constructs big a big um, forehead um small ears um what could what species could that be it looks to me a little bit insectoid i would say not necessarily it could be kior mm -hmm. it could be uh fendorian mm -hmm. There are many species that are, their heads are slightly larger than human heads and do not seem to fit with the body as, uh, as easily as human heads fit on your body. The greys, some of the gray species are like this as well. And you will have larger heads and larger eyes. 
And there are many species that have very small ears or no ears at all mm -hmm. because they're using te telepathy for most of their communication. So, uh, yes, it could be other species as well. But I'm, okay, go ahead. It could be also insectoids or mm -hmm. reptilians, for they have larger heads as well. I'm talking about that type of people who are lonely workers. They are not easy to socialize, so they're very introversial. introversial. And uh, their body is kind of slim, could be tall, slim, and healthy by some reason. Tall, slim, and healthy, but they are sure not from this world. They're very different from other people, not very emotional. More, more very, very much like mental. It sounds like you're talking about a Pleiadian, a particular Pleiadian uh, species. Mm -hmm. The blue Pleiadians fit that quite well. Really? Huh? I thought they are fat. Blue Pleiadians. Oh, the tall blue Pleiadians. The tall ones? Yes. yes, tall blues. I see. I was thinking uh, the fat are the short ones. Not exactly fat, but rounded. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. You're thinking of Lakesh's species. Uh huh. They are not who I am speaking of. Okay. I got it. Thank you very much. I think by now I have uh, all the questions answered, and I have about twenty-five minutes left. Thank you much. Uh, you can leave it a blessing if you like. I will do an angelic blessing for you and for those that will listen to this portion of the recording. Thank you. One moment, please. Ziata Randi Kaparata Tazibande Adonai Mokwara San Juji Mitia San Zuture Manti Kwada Ayanga Yuantora Kashisa Monu Ura Kash Tiskif Yuta Monoria Sila Kash of Wunda Pachem Shulum Shajum Yu Nati Tienda Kuta Dranda to see Sensivision Bora and the Kata La Rahashi Shams of Dag. Bakora and the Bori Tees. Berarandi. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And I will bring to you whoever you wish to speak to next. Yeah, a dragon, uh, a dragon from our planet would be great. Yes, I know three, mm -hmm. but the one that will be the most effective for you to speak to will be Donner, the white dragon of the north. Thank you. Much love and many blessings. Same to you, thanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. 